and you are all most welcome. I have a couple of intimations. One, a date for your diary. Um, the 17th of February looks as if that will be the start of our Lent service, our, sorry, our, our Lent reflections. And there'll be more information about that coming out, but you can put that in your diary for now. It will be on Zoom on the evening of the 17th of February. Um, I'd also like to just say again that um, Rita Devlin's funeral will be this Thursday, the 11th of February. So a warm welcome to our service. Listen for our words of gathering. We come with joy, children of God, forgiven, loved and free. The life of Jesus to recall in love laid down for thee. We come with Christians far and near to find, as all are fed, this new community of love in Christ's communion bread. Let's join together in worship as we sing our first hymn, and it's from the Red Hymn Book, CH3, number 388, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. And it's also on your hymn sheets, which Kevin made out for everyone. Come and open your hearts to the one who alone can meet its deepest needs. Come and rejoice in all that God has done. Let's pray together. Lord God and creator of all, we come to you this winter morning. We feel the chill of cold winds 
The sun may be bright, but not yet warm. Yet your love is warm in our hearts. Your perfect will is at work in your creation and in our lives. The work of your hands is amazing and delights us. Yours is all the glory now and always. We thank you for the love and grace which surrounds us. We bow in gratitude that you loved us so much that you gave up your son to restore us to you. We remember his death in our place and resurrection to convince us of your love. But still we fret and are filled with anxiety for earthly things. We forget that Jesus said, do not worry about these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So forgive us for our forgetfulness. Forgive us our lack of faith. And forgive us when we expect others to walk behind us on our journey of life. Lord God, in your grace and love, restore us to be your children filled with faith, to trust and obey our Lord and Master Jesus Christ, who cares so much for us, who gave us this special time to remember him and who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now our scripture readings. Our first reading this morning is from the Old Testament and from the book of Isaiah Chapter 53. Listen for the word of the Lord. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And our reading from the New Testament is from the Gospel of St Luke. Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He was teaching in the synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I want to tell you this morning about a man who lived in London 
in 1742. He was a great musician, yet he was deeply unhappy. He had lost all of his enthusiasm for life. He felt sickly and he stayed languishing in his house. He felt spent, no longer able to compose music, to conduct the orchestras which employed him, no longer able to direct the lavish and elaborate operas he had written. He was at a low ebb in his life and nothing could capture his interest. So he was almost destitute and likely to soon find himself in a debtor's prison. One morning, he received two letters, one from a friend asking him to direct a grand benefit concert to raise money to feed people in Ireland who at that time found themselves in poverty and in sickness and in prison. The other letter was potential material for an operetta sent by his close friend, Charles Jennings. The operetta material was the gospel story made up of short sections from the Old Testament and the New Testament. The musician was George Frederick Handel. He read and reread the gospel story as Charles Jennings had compiled it. Reading the same words of the prophet Isaiah as we heard earlier, the words which foretell the suffering of Jesus at Passover time. Words which we will hear again as the time for preparation begins to come closer. Handel was strengthened and renewed, healed and re-energized by the power of the words of the Holy Scripture and remarkably within three weeks had composed the music to match the scripture texts and creating his great work, Messiah. When Handel was at his lowest point, the words which recounted Isaiah's and Micah's prophecies of the Messiah, then the news of Jesus' birth, life, rejection, death and resurrection, and then the apostles' teaching and the people receiving the word gladly. These were the words of healing for Handel and for us all. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Messiah was so successful, so popular, and made such an impact that with just some of the money made from Messiah, Handel was able to send funds to Ireland to relieve the suffering of so many families caused by the extreme poverty, the disease, and the imprisonment of so many people. And thus, scripture was fulfilled. Jesus said, I have come to tell good news to the poor, proclaim freedom to prisoners, sight to blind people, and release for those oppressed. Every time we work for the lives of others in Jesus' name, scripture is fulfilled in our time too. Handel's healing and response to scripture truly enriched the lives of so many people. Those who heard the operetta at that time, those whose lives were made immeasurably better by the funds which he was able to send to Ireland. And down through the years, for all of us who have heard and sung the words of Messiah, letting the gift of music and the powerful words of scripture heal and renew. As we join in this wonderful story today, as people who have gladly heard the gospel, 
Let Jesus' words heal and renew your spirit. Let his compassion flow over you and let our communion together with him be a time of peace and love. And may we know a blessing from God's word heard and preached in this place today. And now let us pray as we dedicate the offerings given to the church. Christ has no body now on our earth but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours. So may we in our giving and in this money that we give, cause your kingdom, Heavenly Father, to grow and to be a blessing to your people. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing again. And this is a hymn from Junior Praise. Now it's Junior Praise 141, if you've got the book. And it's Jesus' name above all names. We're going to sing it twice. But I wonder, Alistair, if you would play it through once, because I believe it might not be all that familiar to you. So, and I haven't heard it for a wee while either. So, Alistair, could you play it once through so that we can hear it? And then we'll sing it twice after that. As we prepare now for communion, we're going to speak the words of the communion hymn together. And this is on your sheet as well. It's in the purple hymn book, CH4658. Before I take the body of my Lord. So we'll speak together. Before I take the body of my Lord, before I share his life in bread and wine, I recognise the sorry things within. These I lay down. The words of hope I often failed to give. The prayers of kindness buried in my pride. The signs of care I argued out of sight. These I lay down. The narrowness of vision and of mind. The need for other folk to serve my will. The every word 
and silence meant to hurt. These I lay down. Of those around in whom I meet my Lord, I ask their pardon and I grant them mine and every contradiction of Christ's peace. These I lay down. Lord Jesus Christ, companion at this feast, I empty now my heart and stretch my hands and ask to meet you now in bread and wine, which you lay down. In this time of silence, we bring you our own quiet prayers for the healing of ourselves, for other people, and for all of your creation. And so we pray in silence. Living Lord, hear our prayers for ourselves and others, and may your will be done and your kingdom come. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the Lord's table. The Lord Jesus Christ invites us to share this joyful feast. People will come from east and west, from north and south, to take their place at the banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. Let us pray. As the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common uses. Living Lord, send down your Holy Spirit to bless us and these your gifts of bread and wine, so that the bread which we break may be for us the communion of the body of Christ and the cup of blessing be the communion of the blood of Christ. And now our communion responses. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. According to the holy institution, example and command of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to remember all that he did for us, we do this now at his invitation. Jesus on the night that he was bred, he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in memory of me. Draw near then with faith. Receive the bread as the body of Christ and the wine as his blood shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Take, eat. This is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. Do this, remembering him. This cup is the new covenant sealed by Christ's blood, which was shed that the sins of many might be forgiven. Drink from it, all of you. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you glory and thanks and praise for the dying and undying love of our Saviour Jesus Christ, for your desire for reconciliation with us through him. In your great goodness, you have brought us into communion with him and with all who love him. You have proclaimed us to be your children and made us heirs of your everlasting kingdom. By your grace, may we continue in love to live to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's continue our worship as we join in singing hymn number 675 from the Purple Hymn Book. Now let us from this table rise.
and now a blessing. Leave from this time together, restored in body and soul, and with renewed love in your hearts. And may the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the keeping of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>